Hey everyone, I wanna welcome you to Gateway Christian Church at home. Today, we're gonna to be looking at how we can be a positive light in the midst of all this pain. How can we be love to those around us, to those who are hurting? How can we make the best of any situation? So take a moment and hit that share button right now and join us as we praise and worship God together.
cross my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed
same God that never fails. You'll not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. And the same God who's never late is working all things out. He's working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Thanks so much for joining us for Church at Home. The message is going to begin shortly, but before we do, I want to encourage you to grab that link and share it with a friend. At Gateway, we exist to love God, love others, and make disciples. I'm so excited to announce that Gateway will be reopening our physical services soon. So make sure to follow us on Facebook to keep updated on when that will be and the details surrounding that but we will be continuing to offer our church at home services as well. I'd also like to take a moment to highlight our next steps with you. If it's your first time joining us, we would love for you to fill out our digital connection card at gatewaycc.org forward slash card or click the link in our chat. We also have our small groups meeting together online. You can join by filling out our digital connection card. If you or someone you know needs prayer, let us know. We would love to be praying for you. You can do any of those by filling out that card at gatewaycc.org forward slash card. Next, we have our notes and devotions that go along with today's message. You can find them at gatewaycc.org forward slash notes. 
I also wanted to highlight on Sundays at 10 a.m. we have our kids service here on our Facebook page. So grab your kiddos around six and under and get ready for some dances and story time. We're so excited to be able to bring you Church at Home. A great way to partner with us in ministry is by giving online. You can do so at gatewaycc.org forward slash give. When the folks next door have a bigger home, a nice sports car and a garden gnome, wow. your minivan has zero chrome, you're blessed with what's your own, stay positive. Welcome to Gateway in the Home. We're getting ready to start coming together and meet and being able to fellowship and worship together. Let's pray it happens sooner versus than later. I'm believing and praying for that. You know, by the way, one of the things I love about coming together as believers is that we're able to encourage each other in times of great turmoil, in times of testing, in times of a tremendous upheaval that we're going through right now. I mean, I love to be around positive people, don't you? If I had my choice, I'd much rather hang out with people who are positive than people who are negative. People who believe and hope for better things rather than doom and gloom and things are never going to change. People that would tend to pick me up and encourage me, even if they needed to challenge me, to be better instead of knocking me down. Now, if given a choice, if I was driving around, there's some places that are good to park in, other places not so much. I don't choose to park in a tow zone if I can help it, do you? In a no park zone, in a tow zone, that would be kind of a bummer. I would rather park in a no bummer zone where you're good. So paying, being positive about stuff like that, it's not ignoring the fact that there are places you shouldn't park or places that are better if you do. No, being positive is not ignoring the facts. It's understanding, accepting the facts, and then doing the best we can in and with those circumstances and with those facts. Uh, I'm going to il illustrate that. This is a lemon. It's one of my neighbor's lemons. These are really wonderfully homegrown lemons. Now, the thing about a lemon, if you suck this, I have a feeling that uh, there might be a manifestation of that. Let, let's just try that, all right? Folks, this is a real lemon, and the fact is, it is really sour. Um, that's legit. That's, that's a real reaction. Lemon juice in my mouth is evidenced, I mean, it's, it's only in here, but you can see it on my face, can't you? What's in my mouth is going to be evidenced on the outside. What's lingering in your mouth can be seen in your face. What's lingering, by the way, in your heart can also be seen in your countenance and in your face. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 13 says, A happy heart makes the face cheerful, but heartache crushes the spirit. In the New Living Translation, it says, A glad heart makes a happy face, and a broken heart crushes the spirit. So, you know, we don't want to deny the facts. Denial will never change the facts. If we're in a, neg a negative situation, and we certainly are, we got this COVID-19 virus crisis. We've also got the incredible upheaval that's happening in our country right now with uh, George Floyd and, and that, when he died, when he was killed, when he was murdered, people look at that differently. But oh my gosh, he, it, that was wrong. And we've got an amazing, just the, the division in our country and the upheaval that's happening because of that. Denial is not going to help that situation. This is a lemon, whether you accept that or not. And pretending that that is not sour, that doesn't change the fact that this is sour. So if you've got heartache in your soul, if you've got burdens, if you've got fears, denying them is not going to help. And, and honestly... I am grieving. My heart is broken over this George Floyd situation and, and other just unjust killings. Wrong. People, racism needs to stop. It's not okay. It's sin. Stop it. 
God hates that. I hate that. I hope you hate that. And I hope that we start respecting and loving each other. We are called to love God, love others, and stop this nonsense. God loves people regardless of your skin color, your height, your sex. He loves people. Jesus died for you and he died for me. Now listen, racism has got to stop. You know what else needs to stop? The violence that's being protested right now. Are we upset? I'm upset. I'm angry about this. But we can't be violent to people that didn't cause this. People are tearing up restaurants in our area and, and they had nothing to do with this. Listen, didn't your mother tell you two wrongs don't make a right? Martin Luther King said, you cannot drive out hate with hate. You can't drive out darkness with darkness. Only light can do that. You don't drive out hate with hate. Only love can do that. Love God, love others, everyone. God is calling us to that. Now listen, my heart is crying out to God for this unjust killing that happened. My heart is also crying out to God right now that the criminal elements and the looting would stop. And oh, Father, save us. God, help. Listen, I'm not denying the facts. I'm upset about it. But I'm also doing the best I can to love people and respect them. And I am praying with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. Praying with fasting. Listen, the Bible says in Psalm 62, denying doesn't change or help. But you know what does? Psalm 62, verse 8 says, O my people, trust in him at all times. And listen to this phrase. Pour out your heart to him, for God is a refuge. Pour out your heart to him. O God, we are pouring out our heart. We are pouring out our heart. Save us. Deliver us. Heal our land. Stop the hate. Stop the prejudice. Stop the racism. God, fill us with your spirit and fill us with love. Pour out your heart to God. When you pour out your heart to God, listen, several things can happen. Number one, when you pour out your heart, instead of stuffing it down in there and letting it brew, when you're pouring out your heart, you're releasing the pressure inside of you. You don't stuff it back down. You literally release it and you get it out. And number two, when you're pouring out your heart to God, guess what? You're confessing to God what he already knows anyway. He knows what you're going through. He knows what we're going through. He knows what's in your heart. And as you release how you feel about your situation, just that release really helps. But God also hears and he's working things out. And let's not just stop there. If you like lemons and you get a lemon, one thing that you can do that's going to feel really good in your mouth is you can add something sweet. And then from the lemons, you can make lemonade. And that's what I want to talk about now is how to take lemons and make gourmet lemonade. And so one of the things that I think that we can do as we're pouring out our hearts to God that really helps is a word called thanksgiving, gratitude. That's not easy to do right now. In the midst of, I mean, you, you heard me pour out my heart right now on tape, but guess what? We can pour out our hearts with thanksgiving, even when we're not really feeling like good things are happening, because faith says God is going to work this out. Faith says through this tragic thing that happened, as people are saying enough of that, we're going to be believing that we're going to make some better rules and we're going to have a better philosophy of life and government to live by. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping that, would, that God would bless America, that God would bless our community, that God would bless our families, and we could learn to live with each other and tolerate each other with love, respect, honor each other, right? Even if I disagree with you, that I could, I could learn that you, even though you differ from me, you differ from me and from, you know, I can respect you and the Lord willing, you can learn to respect us as well. Let's respect and love each other, even 
Maybe even especially if we don't agree about everything. Thanksgiving. Having gratitude in your heart. It's so much better than having the bitterness. Now, one psychology article that I read, that I looked up, uh, it suggested that there are several benefits of gratitude. Gratitude, turns out, releases toxic emotions. Gratitude also reduces pain. Gratitude improves sleep quality. Gratitude aids in stress regulation, and gratitude also releases, it reduces, anxiety and depressions. So according to psychology, it's like gratitude is a gateway to peace. So that's what we want to learn to do. We want to use thanksgiving in our pouring out and in our praise and in our prayers, in our petitions, in our cry out to God, because that's mixing faith and hope in with, with all of the pain that we feel in our hearts. Now, there's a section of scripture that really helps and kind of teaches us how to do that. It's found in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Philippians 4, 4 says this, Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Boy, joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5.22, you know, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Love, joy, man, those first two, man, you could stop right there. It doesn't. There's a lot of good. There's nine fruit of the Spirit, but love and joy and peace, wow. God, we need some of that. So it says, be full of the, the, the joy of the Lord also is our strength. Be full of joy in the Lord, rejoice. Be full of joy in the Lord, rejoice. There's something about the joy of the Lord that gets amplified. It gets released as you release that. Lord, thank you that you're hearing our cry. Thank you that you're going to help make some better rules for us to live by and to be able to honor one another and to be able to live in peace and love and, and, and respect with one another. Man, we start rejoicing. We start declaring that. We start believing and praying that. You literally can activate strength in you as you rejoice and as you praise. Rejoice in the Lord. Always be full of joy in the Lord. And I say it again, rejoice. Verse 5, Philippians 4, 5. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all that you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. God is watching all the time. His eye is on us. Philippians 15.3, the eyes of the Lord are everywhere, keeping watch on the wicked and the good. God sees what's going on. You may not think he does. You may think you're going to get away with something, but God sees us all of the time. So live for God. Remember that you're representing God. If you're a follower of Christ, if you're a believer in Christ, if you're a Christian, you're representing God 24-7, so live like it. And remember, He's coming soon. Be considerate in everything you do. Remember, the Lord is coming. Boy, you look around and it sure feels like the end times are getting closer every single day. So let's live like it. Treat one another like God wants you to treat them Love them. Love your neighbor as yourself. We're all going to give an account for that one day. Philippians 4, 6. You know, one thing that my wife Carrie said is, you know, if you think about this pandemic that we're in, now we've got the COVID-19, now we've got a pandemic of rioting and, and upheaval and things, and, and a you know, pandemic of racism. There's so many pandemics we're dealing with. You know, here's one that, that we, we need to do. We need to turn this situation into a pandemic of prayer. Let's be praying. The Bible says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. I love that. Don't worry about anything. Man, there's a lot of stuff. True confession. Man, that used to be me. I used to worry about everything. We got plenty of stuff you look at. We got plenty to worry about, don't we? I used to be a big time worry war. In fact, if I couldn't think about something I was worried about, I started worrying about, I must be missing something to worry about. It worries, man, that, that, that is just a self-fulfilling prophecy that just has a loop that never ends like a bottomless pit, pit. Instead of worrying, use that thought or anxious, you know, attack to start praying. Tell God what you need. And thank Him for what He has done. And as you do that, as you begin to thank God, that puts you in a place of, you know what, Lord? I, you're going to come through on this. It starts activating hope 
you know. Verse 7, Philippians 4, 7. Then you will experience God's peace. By the way, there's a whole progression of things. Verse 4, rejoice, right? Be considerate. Live the right way. Treat others with respect. You give an account. God is coming, right? Jesus is coming soon. Don't be anxious. Pray. Pray with thanksgiving. Pour out your heart to God. Notice, you do all of those things. Then you get to verse 7 that says, you do that, then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. What a great promise. You will experience God's peace. <laughs> I love that. His peace becomes real. And instead of worrying yourself to death, you have an inner strength. All of a sudden, you, you feel like you're, you're handling it. You're not in denial. You know exactly what's happening. In fact, you're praying as things are happening. But you can be just like Jesus in that boat. The storm was raging. The disciples, fishermen, weathered, trained, experienced fishermen thinking they were going to die. It, the, the, the threat was real. And there was Jesus asleep in the boat because he knew God was not going to let them drown. God, you got this. So the storm is real, but you can rest. You can sleep in peace knowing, God, you got this. You got me. You got my family. God bless America, right? The peace of God which surpasses understanding puts a guard around your heart and mind. It's like you have a force field around you, right? <clears throat> you're not caving into pressure. You're conquering, you're growing, you're developing spiritual strength as you rejoice, as you are considerate, as you treat people with kindness and respect and love. You don't drive out the shadows with shadows. You don't drive out the darkness with darkness. You don't overcome hate with hate. You overcome it with love. The Bible literally says, let us not be overcome by evil, but let us overcome evil by doing good. We overcome the bad by doing good, by being good. Let's do that. Love your neighbor as yourself. And listen, as you're praying this out, you know, sometimes prayer doesn't necessarily change immediately the circumstances around you, but you know what prayer always does? It always changes you. Prayer always changes you. But eventually it is going to change things around you as well, sometimes really quick. And I'm praying and believing for change. Lord, we need it. Please send us good, positive change. So, as you pray, God is using that inner cry and our intercession and our crying out to God. All, all of these things, he uses that to help conform you and I to the image of Christ. Even as we pray for the pandemics to pass and the COVID to be done and then the rioting to stop and racism to stop. Even as we pray for these things, God is helping you to become more like Jesus. And the Lord willing to become more like him every single day. We're all going through just, it's an unbelievable time of testing. And, and I'm sure that there's things in your life that are very personal, that, that are unique to you. We, we have a lot of stuff we're going through together that's very similar, but there's probably things that you're going through that are also very personal. I told you last week, my wife was diagnosed with basal cell carcinoma skin cancer. It's usually not a big deal. But she's had this area on her face uh, that's been there for several years. And so, you know, doctors had looked at it before. It was supposed to be not a big deal. Then it kind of got angry a few months ago. And now we're in this COVID-19 and we're waiting. And we finally got in to go, you know, they finally opened up the, the uh, hospitals to see her again. And now, boom, they, they did a biopsy. They took as much as they could off. And now it, it turns out that it's cancer. You know, they said... It's going to be a while. We want to get to it as soon as we can, but we, they haven't called yet. The last thing you want to do when you find out you've got a cancer is wait. And that's all we can do is wait. We've called them. We're trying to get a, We're waiting. What do you do when you wait? There is something that you can do while you wait. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not fail. 
They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and they shall not faint. You know what? We're waiting on the Lord. Waiting is what we do as we pray for God's breakthrough. Waiting isn't just passive, it's active. We're praying, we're, in the, we're, we're agreeing with God, we're pouring out our hearts to the Lord, we're listening, we're praying with thanksgiving. And by the way, it also goes on to say in Philippians chapter 4, there's something else you should do in the midst of this. Verse 8, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. I mean, that's a great way to think, right? Fix your thoughts. I mean, kind of like that focus. Remember, remember the karate kid? Focus, Daniel san focus. Remember that, right? And, and we want to fix our thoughts, focus our thoughts intentionally. Take, you know, and we got all kind of crazy thoughts going on, right? And we're supposed to take captive our thoughts and make them obedient to Christ. Fix on what is true. Jesus is true. He is the truth that can set you free. Fix on the honorable. Honor your father and mother that it may go well with you. Honor one another. Honor everyone as, as much as you can, right? How different is that than the way that people are thinking today? Man, and then it says, think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Oh, that is so much excellent. Thinking about things that are worthy of praise. Like one day, this is going to be over and it's going to be better. That's a great thought, right? I, I don't believe that's pie in the sky thinking. That's certainly better than thinking it'll never end. I'll never get to go to Disneyland or we'll never go on vacation ever again. You know, we're not in denial about these things. We're determined that the kingdom of God is coming and that we can live better. As much as it's up to me, I'm going to honor you. As much as I can, I am going to love you, and I'm going to respect you, and I'm going to honor you. I can't make anybody else do that, but I can take ownership for who I am, and I can love you. Amen? You can take ownership of your life, and you can be determined. You're not going to be a criminal. You're not going to be a racist. You're going to love people. You can decide who you are going to be, and God will help you do the right thing. I don't, I don't remember who said this. I, I either read this or heard it in a sermon. I don't remember, but I like what it says. Someone said when it comes to excellence, it said, he said, or they said, aim for perfection, but settle for excellence. It's a good thought. Aim for perfection. We're not perfect. Jesus was perfect. We're not. But that's, that's the goal. Jesus said, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. I'm not perfect, but that's what I want to be. That's what I strive. That's what I want. I want to endeavor to live like that. And then with God's help, I might not be perfect. And God forbid me when I'm not. And honey, forgive me. And, and if I've offended you, forgive me. Aim for perfection, but settle for excellence. See, when you're doing the very best you can, you're going to do pretty good. Matt's man. I love that. And here's one last verse. <clears throat> Philippians 4.9 says, Keep putting into practice all you've learned and received from me. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. Friends, sermons don't do you any good at all if you don't put them into practice. Doesn't do any good. If you want, and listen, if you want to stay negative, you know what you have to do? Not much. You know, what do you have to do to grow a, a garden of weeds? Not much. In fact, if you've got a garden and it's got good stuff in it that you want to see grow and flourish, flowers or stuff to eat, you got to work hard to keep them weeds out. What do you have to do to have weeds grow in your garden? Nothing. But if you want a garden that's flourishing, you got to work on it consistently, all of the time. So if you want to stay positive, listen, when you get negative thoughts, you got to pull those things up by the roots. Pull them out of there. I mean, any kind of negative things that start coming your way. And by the way, you know, this lemon is not a real negative thing. It's not a weed. I don't want to get rid of it. But even something good for you can be kind of sour. Let alone a weed, let's pull them up and let's get them out. Burn those weeds, right? 
But thing, even things that aren't necessarily pleasant in and of themselves can be turned into gourmet, health-inducing things. Let's take the sour out of our hearts and pour it out to God. I mean, God wants to refresh your spirit. He wants to have His joy and His peace guard your heart, His joy to refresh you, His Spirit to give you the strength you need to not be pulled down into anarchy and hate, but to rise above it, to mount up with wings as eagles, and to soar over the storm. We're in a storm, no doubt about it. God is calling you and me to be different. Even in, in the challenge of this time, to love and to respect and to believe that the God of hope hears that. And we know, do you know? And we know the Bible says, God is causing even this, the horrible circumstances we're in, that he's gonna work some good out of it. He causes all things to come together, to work together for good to those who love God and, the, and are called according to his purpose. Pray with me, Father, our hearts are broken and grieving for what we're going through as a country. First of all, the whole world is under attack with this virus. Second of all, Father, our country is under attack by, by evil forces. And oh God, we pray that you'd stop the evil in its tracks. We don't overcome evil with evil. We don't, two wrongs don't make a right. Hate does not drive out hate. But God, we need to be filled with your spirit because love can drive out hate. Light can drive out darkness. Friend, if you've been struggling with stuff in your heart because of everything that's going on, Let's just cry out to God. Cry out to God with me this morning. Oh God, hear our cry. Stop the racism. Stop the hate. Oh God, protect our families, protect our people, protect our country. Turn this nation away from its sins. Help us to live a lifestyle that truly honors you. Oh God, we cry out to you. We pray we need your help big time. Lord, deliver us from our fears. Friend, Jesus said that he is the truth that can set you free. He is the way, the truth, the truth and the life. If you want to be saved from yourself, your sin, your bitterness, your, your hate, your anger, you know, the righteousness of, of God is not produced when, when we get involved with anger in the flesh. God delivers from that. You know what? Maybe the best th thing you could do today is just to say, Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins and my hate and deliver me from my own anger that could wind up hurting other people as well. Maybe you need to ask Jesus to come into your heart right now, forgive you of your sins, cleanse you, give you a new spirit. You know what, there's some things we should be angry about. Injustice and sin and racism. We should be angry about these things, but we should not then go out and hurt other people as a part of that process. God, deliver us from evil. Deliver all of us from evil. And may our lives bring you glory. We ask and we pray it in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks again for joining us this weekend for Church at Home. If you're interested in joining one of our virtual small groups or are ready to take the next step, let us know at gatewaycc.org forward slash card. I just wanna say thank you so much for partnering with us at Gateway. Your generosity is able to make an impact in our community. If you wanna learn more about partnering with us through giving, you can do so at gatewaycc.org forward slash give. Let's be the church. Go ahead and share the link to someone you feel could benefit from today's message. And be sure to check our Facebook page often for updates as we navigate our reopening. 
Have a great week. Hey everyone, I'm so glad you're able to join us today. We're just going to take a moment now to remember the sacrifice of Jesus. You know, I was trying to think of something to share and something I could say, and, and really all of it falls short except this Jesus loves you. Jesus loves everyone. There's no prejudice, there's no race, there's no gender that God uses as a, or that Jesus uses as a precursor for his love. He gave for you. He gave his life. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter what kind of hurts you have, or maybe even the hurts that you've done, Jesus is standing there saying, I love you this much. I gave my life for you, and all you have to do is repent, believe in me, and be saved. So let's just take a moment and just think about that. Think about his sacrifice, and then we'll partake of the elements in just a moment. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, he broke it, and he said, do this every time you eat and remember me. Let's partake. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying that this cup represents the new covenant in my blood. Do this every time you drink it. And remember me. Let's partake. Lord, I, I thank you for the sacrifice that you made for us. That you loved us so much that you sent, that you came and you paid the penalty for our sin. Lord, with everything that's going around us today, Show us how to be light. Show us how to be a positive person in our community that's making a difference, showing your love to those around us. Lord, we love you. We pray this in your name. Amen. Have a great week.